we only see very partially. We never see anything completely with the totality of our mind or with the fullness of our heart. Notice that Krishnamurti brings in the heart. Notice too that Krishnamurti often uses the word love. And unless we learn this extraordinary art, it seems to me that we shall be functioning, living through a very small part of our mind, through a small segment of the brain. Seeing destroys all barriers. The barriers, of course, include the walls we have built around ourselves with thought. All of it dissolves in a moment of seeing. And this is from uh, one of the journals, Krishnamurti to himself. You sat on a rock smooth, cracked, where the sun must for century upon century, without any regret, have cracked it. And in the little cracks, you saw tiny little living things scurrying about. And there was that utter silence, complete and infinite. As most of you or all of you know, you know, he spent countless hours hiking in the wilderness where, whenever he could, wherever he went in the world. And um, this particular moment of, of the immeasurable occurred in Ojai on one of his hikes. And that is the dissolving of all barriers. He says, seeing is the act of love. You know what makes the total mind sensitive? Only love. I want to share something, uh, a reminiscence, as it were, from the Trappist monk Thomas Merton. Um, because this, this has a, uh, a clear relationship to everything we're speaking about when it comes to seeing. Uh, you may have, uh, you may know about this particular story he tells or you may have heard it from me before, but um, it's one of those uh, uh, instances of seeing that Krishnamurti is really always pointing to. So Merton uh, was running, he was running his errands in downtown Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, the hermitage that he uh, was a part of was in Kentucky when he had an experience that would change his life and influence countless others. And Merton described it this way. In Louisville, at the corner of 4th and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all those people, that they were mine and I was theirs, that they could not be alien to one another. We could not be alien to one another, even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of spurious self-isolation in a special world, the world of renunciation and supposed holiness. This sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and such a joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. Now I realize what we all are. 
And if only everybody could realize this, but it cannot be explained. There is no way of telling people what they are, that they are all walking around shining like the sun. Now, because of this revelation, the town put a marker where he had this experience. He was 43. The actual seeing that there is no other. In the awareness where there is no seer, there is only the seeing and there is love. He wrote about it, calling it the ground of love for which there is no explanation. And so we come back to the, the way I see the thread of Krishnamurti's teaching. When I understand myself, I understand you. And out of that understanding comes love. And for someone like Merton, it happened in an instant. But he'd been working toward that instant most of his life. And as I mentioned yesterday, Krishnamurti includes sensitivity as part of seeing. You cannot see if you are not sensitive. And you are not sensitive if you have an image between you and the thing that you see, the thing that is seen. And sometimes when we, we see a child like this, whether or not we're related to the child, it could just be a child we see when we're out and about, Quite often, you may have noticed this for yourself, there's nothing between you and what you see when you see something like this. There is a, perhaps just an instant or two of a recognition of wonder that is reflected back to you in the child's eyes. And so there's nothing between you. There's only the seeing of beauty, of wonder. So I think this encapsulates it quite well. Um, there is either the me or the seeing. There can't be both. Me is non-seeing. The me cannot see, cannot be aware. So what this comes down to in my words is your own seeing is both your teacher and the teaching. Because to see is to begin to understand yourself, others, and the whole of life. No one is teaching you from the outside. This is an inside job when you see. And thus there's no authority outside of yourself. So I'm asking these questions. I know a couple of you went on a walk this morning and saw what you saw. So even if you didn't go out on a walk, did you see the silent art of nature this morning? Did you look at the sky? the mountains, tree. Nature is full of silent art. What did you notice? When you made breakfast, did you actually look at your food, your coffee or tea? Or was it merely an automatic motion of eating and drinking? Isn't that what we do generally when we stumble into the kitchen in the morning.
Did you take a moment to relax and see prior to our gathering this morning? Something to consider for this afternoon and tomorrow morning and every morning. Come back to the breath. Notice the instant difference in awareness when you came back to your breath. And as you breathe, just give attention to this moment. The question that is really underneath the interest in seeing is can we be inwardly free, free of sorrow and psychological suffering? And to find out, I can only find out by seeing what the mind is occupied with because that's where the psychological suffering arises. It's really uh, simple and yet not so simple to look inside my own mind and look at the thoughts and understand where they are arising from and follow that trail until I see clearly what it is. So he says, the very fact that I am conditioned and the realization of that fact brings an immediate clarification. But there's so much more to that. The difficulty lies in not realizing it in the sense of understanding all its implications, seeing that all thought, however, however subtle, however cunning, however sophisticated or philosophical is conditioned. So there is an unmasking of multiple layers of myself, or this construction I have of myself. So Krishnamurti says, one must be aware of oneself, neither introspectively nor analytically, but actually be aware of oneself as one is, and see if it is at all possible to be entirely free of all those issues that seem to clog the mind. All the issues that clog the mind. <laughs> the machinery of thought, never ending thought, until the instant I notice that I'm thinking and then it ceases. He says, to know the whole content of one thought reveals the whole process of the mind. So if we can understand the content, the basis, the whole story behind one thought, we understand the whole process of the mind. <clears throat> so, Krishnamurti says this in a very, I think, precise way. Unless you actually see what you are every day, the way you talk, the way you feel, the way you react, Unless you lay the foundation there, how can you get very far? You have to lay this foundation, which is to understand what you are. And you can understand what you are only by watching yourself, not trying to correct it, not trying to shape it, not trying to say this is right or this is wrong, but seeing what is actually taking place. 
When you do look in that way, you will find that you look with eyes which are full of affection. And it is only where there is great affection and love that you can see the total existence of life. There's an F missing there, of life. So once again, the seeing is the action. There's nothing I need to do except get out of the way. So this is the question that one can ask whenever it's remembered. What is my relationship with what I see? And then a space might open up to actually see. What is my relationship with stillness, with the awareness that is silent and through which the seeing occurs? And throughout, you know, the whole uh, thread of not only his teaching, but really um, the essence of all the great wisdom teachings is this question, is there a light that is not lit by another? This is what Krishnamurti asks. This is another way of saying this from the Gospel of Thomas. Come into being as you pass away. As the me, the construction of me passes away. In the act of seeing, we learn to see ourselves from the inside out. And this frees us to see more of our own inner light and to see the same light in others. This is not Krishnamurti speaking, this is me. So he says, awareness is observation without choice, condemnation or justification. Awareness is silent observation from which there arises understanding without the experiencer and the experienced. In other words, the seeing that no one sees. Just the seeing sees, and this is silent awareness. There's no me present. So the mind that wishes to be fundamentally, deeply in a state of change, in a state of revolution, must be free from the known. Then the mind becomes astonishingly still. And only such a mind will experience the radical transformation which is so necessary. But as we've already observed this morning, that radical transformation can happen in an instant of seeing when you hear a bird and you are taken out of your mind for a few seconds. When you have this sense of real observation, real seeing, then that seeing brings with it this extraordinary elimination of time and space, which comes about when there is love. This is what Thomas Merton was talking about. Seeing destroys all barriers. There are no boundaries when we see. 